Hey there, future doctors. Are you ready to embark on an incredible journey into the microscopic world that forms the foundation of all living things? It's Bill Nye here, and guess what we're diving into today? That's right, the amazing world of cells. These tiny powerhouses are more fascinating than you might think. The amazing world of cells. From the smallest bacteria to the largest mammals, cells are the building blocks that make life possible. They come in all shapes and sizes, each with its own unique function. Understanding cells is like having a superpower when you're tackling the neat UG biology exam. Imagine being able to see the intricate details of life at a microscopic level. It's like unlocking a secret code that explains how living organisms function. Why? Because cells are the fundamental units of life, my friends. Every single function in our bodies, from breathing to thinking, starts at the cellular level. These tiny units work tirelessly to keep us alive and healthy. Everything in our bodies, from our muscles to our brains, is made up of these tiny, bustling factories of life. Muscle cells contract to allow movement, while brain cells communicate to process information. Each type of cell has a specific role, and together, they create the complex systems that keep us functioning. And just like any good detective needs to know their crime scene, you need to know the difference between a prokaryotic cell, like bacteria, and a eukaryotic cell, like one of your very own. Prokaryotic cells are simpler and lack a nucleus, while eukaryotic cells are more complex and contain a nucleus and other organelles. So get ready for a wild ride as we explore the fascinating world of cell theory and the different types of cells that make life possible. We'll delve into the history of cell discovery, understand the key principles of cell theory, and learn about the various cell types that exist in the world around us. Whether it's the single-celled organisms that thrive in extreme environments or the specialized cells that make up our tissues and organs, there's so much to discover. So, buckle up and let's dive into the microscopic universe of cells. Now, before we jump into the nitty-gritty of cells, let's rewind the clock a bit. Imagine a world where the concept of cells was completely unknown. A time when the microscopic world was a mystery waiting to be uncovered. Back in the 1600s, a curious dude named Robert Hooke was peering through a microscope at a slice of cork. This was no ordinary glance. It was a groundbreaking moment in the history of science. To his surprise, he saw a bunch of tiny compartments that reminded him of the little rooms monks lived in. These compartments were unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. You know what he called them? Cells. This simple yet profound observation laid the foundation for what we now know as cell theory. And that, my friends, was the spark that ignited the cell theory revolution. It was a pivotal moment that changed the course of scientific inquiry forever. But Hooke's discovery was just the beginning. The journey to understanding cells was long and filled with many more discoveries. It took the dedication and sharp minds of many scientists to unravel the true secrets of cells. From Antonia van Leeuwenhoek, who discovered single-celled organisms, to Theodor Schwann and Matthias Schleiden, who proposed that all living things are made of cells, each played a crucial role. Over the centuries, advancements in technology and scientific techniques have allowed us to delve deeper into the microscopic world. Today, we understand that cells are the basic building blocks of all life, each with its own unique functions and structures. The story of cells is a testament to human curiosity and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. It reminds us that even the smallest discoveries can have a monumental impact on our understanding of the world. Diastas. Fast forward to the 1800s, where two brilliant scientists, Matthias Schleiden and Theodor Schwann, entered the scene. These two pioneers were about to change the way we understand life itself. Schleiden was deeply engrossed in studying plants, meticulously observing their intricate structures. On the other hand, Schwann was fascinated by animals, delving into the complexities of their cellular makeup. And what did these two discover? That both plants and animals were made up of, you guessed it, cells. This revelation was monumental, bridging the gap between the plant and animal kingdoms. This was huge. It was like finding out that the same building blocks were used to make everything from skyscrapers to tree houses. 
Imagine realizing that the same fundamental units are at the core of all living things, no matter how different they appear on the outside. Their groundbreaking work led to the first two principles of cell theory. This was the dawn of a new era in biology, setting the stage for countless discoveries to come. 1. All living organisms are composed of one or more cells. This means that from the tiniest bacterium to the largest whale, every living entity is built from these microscopic units. 2. The cell is the basic unit of structure and organization in organisms. This principle underscores the idea that cells are not just building blocks, but also the fundamental units that organize and structure life itself. These principles laid the foundation for modern cell biology, opening up new avenues for research and understanding. But the story doesn't end there, folks. Enter Rudolf Virchow, another scientific superstar. He added the final piece to the cell theory puzzle. Virchow figured out that cells didn't just magically appear out of thin air. Nope. He proposed that cells could only come from pre-existing cells. Talk about a revolutionary idea. Imagine the excitement in the scientific community. Virchow's contribution solidified the cell theory with its third principle. All cells arise only from pre-existing cells. Section 5. Prokaryotic cells. Small but mighty. Now that we've got the history down, let's talk about the different types of cells. First up, we have the prokaryotes, the simplest forms of life on Earth. Think bacteria and archaea. Don't let their small size fool you though. These single-celled organisms are tough, adaptable, and they play vital roles in our ecosystems. From breaking down organic matter to causing diseases, prokaryotes are a force to be reckoned with. They're like the tiny superheroes of the microbial world. Section 6. Decoding the prokaryotic structure. So, what makes a prokaryotic cell tick? Well, imagine a tiny, self-contained factory. Inside, you won't find a nucleus, which is like the control center of a eukaryotic cell. Instead, their genetic material, a single circular DNA molecule, hangs out in a region called the nucleoid. Prokaryotic cells also have ribosomes, tiny protein-making machines that are essential for their survival. Some prokaryotes even have flagella, whip-like structures that help them move around. Pretty cool, right? Section 7. Eukaryotic cells. The masters of complexity. Now let's move on to the big leagues. Eukaryotic cells. These cells are like bustling cities compared to the prokaryotic villages. They're larger, more complex, and have a true nucleus to house their DNA. Eukaryotic cells are found in plants, animals, fungi, and protists. You name it, they're everywhere. They have a whole network of internal membranes that form specialized compartments called organelles. Each organelle has a specific job, like producing energy, synthesizing proteins, or breaking down waste. Section 8. Exploring the eukaryotic landscape. Let's take a quick tour of some key eukaryotic organelles, shall we? The nucleus, the cell's control center, stores DNA and directs protein synthesis. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell, producing energy through cellular respiration. Then we have the endoplasmic reticulum, a network of membranes involved in protein synthesis and lipid metabolism. And don't forget about the Golgi apparatus, which acts like the cell's postal service, packaging and transporting molecules. Section 9. Prokaryotes versus Eukaryotes, a tale of two cells. Alright, time for a quick comparison. Prokaryotic cells are like the minimalist campers of the cell world. Small, simple and efficient. Eukaryotic cells, on the other hand, are like the luxury RVs. Spacious, complex, and packed with amenities. Remember, NEAT loves to test your understanding of the differences between these two cell types. So, make sure you can compare and contrast their structures like a pro. Section 10. Cell Theory and Cell Types in NEAT Exams 
ace your prep. So why is all this cell knowledge crucial for NEAT, you ask? Well, understanding cell theory and the different types of cells is like having the keys to unlock a treasure chest of biological concepts. You'll encounter questions about cell structure, function, and the principles of cell theory throughout the exam. Remember, practice makes perfect. Work hard, stay curious, and you'll be well on your way to acing NEATUG Biology.